It's been a long time since we made a video about the best upcoming horror games to play this year. And it's mainly because this year feels a little bit dry when it comes to horror, compared to last year, to be honest. I mean, do you remember how awesome 2023 was for horror fans? We had Dead Space, Resident Evil 4, Alan Wake 2, Outlast Trials, Amnesia the Bunker, Dredge, Bramble, System Shock, and much, much more. On the other hand, 2024 has had some good games, but they're mostly few and far in between, and nothing is so special. However, if you are familiar with horror game releases, you probably know that the last quarter of the year tends to be the busiest, because developers believe it's the best season to go through some creepy experiences. <sighs> So even though I'm not really satisfied with this year so far, I think the remaining few months might actually contain some cool stuff that can make it memorable for many of us. In this video, I decided to make a list about the 10 most anticipated horror games in the remaining part of the year, and the ones that really deserve your attention. I chose these titles based on my own standards and taste, which means that they are the games that I am personally interested in and planning to check out once they release. So, without further ado, let's start. This game has been surfacing on our videos for a while now, and it's mainly because it looks so freaking interesting. It's a psychological and survival horror game that delves into the deep side of the human mind, and we can see this in the surreal and dreamlike world that it takes place in. Your job here is to take on the role of an investigator who wakes up in a strange, secluded hospital that looks very nightmarish. Before this, there have been rumors about the disappearance and the mysterious death of residents in an apartment complex called Clover Hill. And this is basically why the detective started his investigation. However, it turns out that the case is more complicated than he thought, and much more disturbing too. The experience involves a lot of bizarre memories and hallucinations, making it hard for you to know what's reality and what's not. On top of that, there's plenty of survival elements here where you must shoot, fight, hide, and use stealth to avoid or confront the enemies in your way. The game was supposed to come out in the next few days on September 3rd, but the developer told us recently that the game still needs some work to finish it properly and avoid any optimization issues. So it will most likely come out later this year at some point, and I'm definitely ready for it. to tell you something you're thinking about it too aren't you hollow buddy is a game for a specific group of people because only players who appreciate classic horror can understand how cool this looks you can clearly see the influence of silent hill 1 and 2 here which really makes it an amazing choice for people who feel nostalgic for that era. Here you find yourself in a dystopian version of Britain from the future, but the catch is that it's also ravaged by a toxic infection. You play as a black market shipper called Mika, whose partner has gone missing in a dangerous exclusion zone. 
and she decided not to give up until she finds him. The gameplay features a combination of fixed and dynamic camera angles, resource management, challenging puzzles, and limited combat, all of which aim to reimagine the tension and atmosphere of early 2000s horror games. The visuals are striking, mixing decayed urban environments with cyberpunk elements, making it feel like a classic horror version of Cyberpunk 2077. The developer mentions that the experience will be full of mysteries, creepy enemies, and a story that can actually reward your curiosity. If you are interested in this, then keep in mind, it's coming very soon, on September 12. Now, this is a game that I didn't even know existed until a few days ago, but I immediately added it to my wishlist because it seems enticing for multiple reasons. The people developing this game are actually very familiar to us as horror fans because they're the same guys behind the dark pictures, Until Dawn, and the one and only Dead by Daylight. In fact, this game is actually related to the Dead by Daylight universe, but offers a unique narrative experience separate from the online format. Hey, mister, that's Officer Green. The story centers around a group of teenagers in the small town of Cedar Hills, where they decide to make a movie about Frank Stone, a notorious serial killer from their town's past. However, as they delve deeper into Stone's dark legacy, they find themselves stuck in a much more dangerous situation than they ever anticipated. The game is designed with the same choice-driven gameplay that these developers are known for, where your decisions heavily influence the story's outcome. You can expect a mix of cinematic horror and intense psychological elements, with some connections to the Dead by Daylight lore and heavy true crime vibes. The game has a free demo that you can play right now, but the good part is that it's coming very soon, on September 3rd, and it might be already available by the time you're watching this. For PC gamers, Stalker is no stranger to their library. People used to play it day and night, back in the 2000s, because for some reason it felt unique and different than all the other shooters at the time. However, the franchise has been pretty much in a coma for the last decade, until Stalker 2 was finally revealed back in 2021. And boy, it's a completely different beast. The game's environment is very dynamic, with intelligent factions, mutants, and anomalies interacting with each other even when the player is not around. Nevertheless, don't ever forget that the experience here is all about staying in one piece. The game places a strong emphasis on survival, requiring you to manage resources like food and water. But be careful, overloading your character with too much weight can actually hinder your movement, making you an easier target. Mm -hmm. 
Do you see how insane this is? This realistic vibe will immerse you even more in the journey. The game also includes a variety of hostile creatures, from the classic bloodsuckers to new threats like the Bion, a creature that mimics your voice and lure you into traps. Every one of these enemies is insanely intelligent, and they can understand your movement better than you think. But the best element for me remains the realistic weather cycle, where day and night have a big role in your experience, and you need to change your strategy based on the timeline. To be honest, this is one of my top three most anticipated games for this year, and I can't wait to get my hands on it on November 20th. this entry. Um, yes, that's for sure. I never even saw this in my nightmares. Something strange is happening to Jack. If you ever heard of an amazing horror game called Madison and you loved it, let me tell you that this is basically the child of that game, but on a smaller yet equally terrifying scale. In this game, you play as a journalist investigating a mysterious body in the morgue. But after returning from the morgue, the protagonist finds her house transformed into a nightmarish environment, haunted by a creature that only fears the flash of the camera. The gameplay relies mostly on solving puzzles and using the camera strategically to fend off the creature. The flash is your only defense here, but the problem is the camera's life can run out, which can stress the heck out of you. With that being said, the story is not something on the side. It's actually disturbing, deep, and delves into realistic sad themes that you should approach responsibly. And by the way, every playthrough is slightly different due to the random puzzles and also because the game offers four possible endings, challenging you to explore and survive multiple scenarios. This game is already available, and even though the story might be a little bit heavy for some, the overall quality and scares make it worthy. What? I didn't make this entry. Um, yes, that's for sure. I remember thinking about it, but how come my thoughts are on this tape? After that, the TV started working. He let me go and, as if nothing had happened, sat down to continue watching the movie. That's not supposed to happen. Zookosis is probably the most bizarre game on the list, but don't let its weird concept fool you into believing it's not terrifying. It's a body cam horror simulation game that puts you in the role of a night shift zookeeper at a zoo where the animals have become infected by a mysterious parasite, turning them into grotesque mutated monsters. The main focus here is survival horror with amazing body cam vibes, but the challenging part is that you must care for the sick animals while also defending yourself from the monstrous versions. This means you need to diagnose the infected animals, develop vaccines and decide which creatures to save and your choices can actually affect the game's multiple endings. This makes the gameplay a little bit emotional, beside being terrifying, because you'll have to sacrifice some animals to save others. 
In my opinion, this really is a special experience of horror where a normal place like the zoo can become your worst nightmare. If you loved what you heard, then keep in mind it's coming soon on September 23rd. Vermont. This is your host on WKWB. As we embrace the first snowfall of the season, there's nothing like a perfect song to set the mood. Fears to Fathom has become a prominent franchise in the indie horror field, and it's mostly because of its spooky stories rather than impressive visuals or random scares. Woodbury Getaway is the fifth episode in the series, and it follows the story of Sydney Harper, a 23-year-old woman working at a consultant firm. One day, she plans a weekend getaway with her college friends to a rental cabin in Woodbury. However, the trip takes a terrifying turn as they encounter unsettling and mysterious events during their stay, which is something familiar in every episode of this series. You can also expect stuff like microphone detection and fishing mechanics, but as I said earlier, it's all about the story here, more than anything else. The developer claims that these are real stories told by the actual survivors who went through them, and this is obviously something enticing on its own. The game is coming on September 12, and you better be ready for it. I don't know how many of you are aware of this game's existence, but I feel it's a mystery for a lot of people, even though it seems like it should be a big thing. It's a survival horror game that appeared from nowhere, and to be honest, I'm all for it, because everything I saw so far is intriguing. The story is set in a post-apocalyptic environment where deadly sound-sensitive creatures hunt anything that makes noise. The gameplay is mostly about heavy emphasis on stealth and careful planning, which means that if you can't be quiet as much as possible, you're doomed. The core of the events revolves around the character's struggle to find safety and maintain hope while navigating the dangers of this world. But there's also a deep narrative in the process that gives life to every character to make them unique. Visually, the game really looks satisfying, and the concept reminds me of Alien Isolation, where your skills in remaining calm are your biggest tools for remaining alive. The release date is October 17th, and I'm planning to try it to see if it's really worth it. No! No! Where is this? Where am I? Hello? We do what this place demands. Is this hell? Hell would have meaning. This is just us and our gloom. Just like Hollow Body, Post Trauma is also a game for a very specific audience. 
that can really understand the beauty of these games beyond the modern view. However, the nightmarish climate of this game reminds me specifically of Silent Hill 4, more than anything else. Because I feel that the main character here is lost and confused, the same way Henry is in the other worlds. You play as Roman, a middle-aged man who wakes up in a bizarre, twisted world. You will go through his journey to escape this devilish environment, while also uncovering the mystery behind his situation and why he's here in the first place. There's a mix of exploration, puzzle solving and combat in the gameplay, and the fixed camera angles are designed to heighten the tension, limiting your field of view and making every corner a potential threat. Instead of eye-catching visuals or mechanics, the game relies on psychology with disturbing environments, scary sound design, and a narrative that explores themes of trauma and reality distortion. It's been years since this game was revealed, and after many trailers, we can finally say it's coming on October 29th. You think you can escape what you've done? I think I can try. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday. But you never did. I don't really need to talk much about this one because it's obviously the most popular in the entire year. And basically the only horror game that can truly make 2024 special. Silent Hill 2 Remake is more than just a game that's going to be released. It actually represents hope, anticipation, and the strong desire that people have for the entire franchise to be revived. After very controversial marketing from both Konami and Bloober, the audience's mood towards the game seems to get more positive with every piece of footage they've shown recently. The visuals are magnificent, the fog is amazing, and the combat is actually decent enough. Even though it might seem junky for people used to action horror games like Resident Evil. The audio has also been remastered with new voice acting and music composed by the one and only Akira Yamaoka, the original composer. What you got there? None of your business. You didn't love Mary anyway. What? Hey, wait! Furthermore, the remake uses an over-the-shoulder camera view, similar to modern survival horror games. And this change is intended to increase immersion during gameplay. Story-wise, we know that the remake follows the same narrative as the original where James searches for his deceased wife in the eerie town of Silent Hill after receiving a mysterious letter from her. However, we might see some changes here and there in the events to make the game interesting even for people who played the original. We already saw this in the gameplay they revealed when they changed the radio's location in the first scene of the enemy. This is obviously a hint that they will switch some stuff in the gameplay and add their touch Two. Another proof for this is that the developers said it will take you 16 to 18 hours to finish the game, and all the way to 20 hours if you want to go through everything deeply. This is not necessarily a bad thing, as long as they actually add interesting stuff and meaningful missions. But if they just add more walking and looking around, for the sake of making it longer, then it will seriously be a problem for some people. 
Regardless of your opinion about the remake so far, you can never make a fair judgment until you actually play it yourself. I'm personally cautious and optimistic at the same time. I have hopes it will be good, but there's also a chance it might not meet expectations. And for the people who still focus on Angela's design, I can almost assure you that the final design will not look like this. The face you see here is most likely an early build, and Bloober was forced to use it in some sections of the trailers because Konami was rushing them. We can see this even in the quality of the face's visuals, compared to other characters like James, for example. The design in the full game will definitely look closer to this shot right here, which is really a good design if we are being fair. I don't want to use the word beautiful because it's not suitable when we think about Angela's tragic story. However, we can say that this is a very normal and realistic face of a 19-year-old girl like Angela. Anyway, October 8 is just a few weeks away, and all of our questions will be answered then. So here it is, guys. 10 new horror games that I believe are the most enticing to play in the rest of 2024. Trust me, I did a deep search to find the ones that are worth mentioning, and I'm convinced the games I mentioned stand out for a lot of reasons. As I said, 2024 is not really very rich when it comes to horror games, but you can still find some incredible options here and there. Give this video a like if you loved it, and if you think I missed an important game, let me know in the comments below. See you next time.